hasn't worked out. No, but we walk by to make three clear cars there. All right, guys, well, we are walking up to our second monument on this trail. It is about a 15 minute ride from, from, from the Swords in a Rock monument. You can also hike up here or bike up here. This one has a little bit of different feel to it. This monument, the broken chain, um, is a, a commemoration monument to the people that died in the oil and gas accident that happened in this fjord in the 1980. Obviously, there's a lot of people that died at the, at the battle scene that we saw right before this, but it's more of a historical site, right? The, there's no leaving, living relatives of those that, that happened uh, 1100 years ago. However, this moment, monument that we see, you know, perhaps somebody's grandfather, husband, um, father died in this offshore uh, tragedy. So, so it is a quite a unique installation that it still has a very emotional uh, ties to the people that live here in Stavanger. And you can imagine the relatives of the people that passed away in this accident, you know, hiking this trail right, right here. It's a beautiful trail. It goes through a little, little park and there's a fjord on that side. There's blossoming flowers and berries and, and right there on the horizon, you can see it. Here we are walking up to the broken chain, the brute link. Look at that, it's even more stoic in the rays of setting sun here in Stavanger. As you can see, it's set in a beautiful place here, right by this magnificent fjord. It's a very brutal, brutal, simple installation, but it is a, it's a very, very powerful image. So I want to tell you a little bit about this disaster. So in the 1980, a semi-submerged oil and gas rig, um, that was built here in Stavanger, was operating not far from Scotland, named after one of Norway's riders, Alexander Kiel, um, lopsided. It, uh, it capsized, and as a result, 123 people perished in, in, in the sea, in the ocean. Um, and uh, th this is uh, one of the biggest tragedies um, that happened in Norway since uh, World War II. And so it, it was a very, very tragic episode, not only to this region where, region where a lot of um, the roughnecks working on that rig came from, but also a very um, emotional time for the old industry and all of Norway at the time, because nothing like this ever happened before. And I think that's when people started grasping just how dangerous oil and gas work is. Uh, obviously, back then, you didn't have all the safety procedures as we have today. Um, so, you know, um, there was much more risk and, you know, it, the, the oil, exp oil exploration in Norway is offshore. So you don't see it. It's not like in the United States where, you know, you have on land wells pumping up and down. It's still very dangerous, but offshore, you know, it's somewhere out there in the sea. And uh, a lot of people didn't really realize just how dangerous it is and so when this happened it sent the shock wave across the country and it was uh it was a big morning for the whole nation so here we are at this monument commemorating the the um the people that perished in that horrible tragic accident and um, we're gonna walk up and uh, see it up close and pay our respects here we are you know, an interesting thing about this place, it's not really finished. There's no pass or anything like that. It's, you know, you're sort of walking on the raw rocks and it, 
in a way, I think it kind of reminds you of uh, of of a danger. You know, it's it's uh, the danger these people faced out in the sea, producing oil. You know, it's you, you kind of have this feel walking through here that you know you have to watch your step, you have to see where you're going. You know, it adds to the um, to the realization um, of being alert and and the danger out there. So, anyhow, here we are, and the broken chain monument. Yes, here we are. As you can see, this symbolizes few things at the same time. Perhaps what I'm sort of considering here is, you know, these these platforms out in the sea, they were stationed and supported by chains, <laughs> probably not this large, although I don't know, but, and you know, and probably one of the chains broke off and that led to the whole station capsizing eventually under the stress of the waves and the water. But also what I would like you to think about is what it represents for the families, right? You have 123 people perishing and that is somebody's father, perhaps mother, perhaps, you know, this is young people of Norway whose grandparents have died in this accident, right? So that's a, that's the broken chain that you see here. It's not just the, the technical disaster, but it's also human disaster that this monument represents. And the scale of it, the, the, the grandiose links that you see sort of adds to the scale of the tragedy, right? Because each human life is, is paramount. It is so important. So many people are linked to each other you know and when when it breaks it is no it is no small thing it is it is families broken it is lives altered forever it is it is a tragedy always when one or more people die and so i think that this is what this monument is trying to portray the, the scale and the seriousness of what happened here in 1980 through the Alexander Keel platform. Yeah, guys, so this is a, a very, uh, very unique place. You know, Stavanger is not far away. It's just, just that way. You can see the houses there, but it is very quiet here. So when you come here, because it is an active place of an active memorial, um, you know, you feel at peace here. You know, you look at the, the nearby fjord, you look at the setting or rising sun, or you look at the, and, uh, and you know, you can, you can reflect, you can remember, remember your, your relatives, perhaps that passed away at this tragic accident. And uh, another thing I wanted to mention is that, you know, it's all symbolical and they don't tell you how to perceive this artwork but you know this broken chain you know when I walked up to it I sort of you know as you walk up close you sort of go inside here to see more of it and then you realize that you're standing right here where the chain broke right as you walk up and you know I'm not Norwegian Norwegian but for the people that lost their lo loved ones and came here to see this this sort of completes the circle where they perhaps can stand right here, remember their relatives that that perished, but at the same time, you know, get healed standing here by completing this chain, by standing in the place where the chain is missing, and and this sort of um, brings maybe peace to to the people that were affected by this tragedy. Now, another thing I wanted to show you as you walk down from this monument, again, watch your step because there's no pathway. It's just rocks. 
you can see there's a little well there there's a little step and if we get close to here I believe we'll see something quite amazing okay so there's a little bit of stairs here Keep walking. Aha, uh -huh. there she is. There you go. Here's a plaque of all 123 people that have perished in this accident in 1980s. Every single name is written down. As you can see, it's mostly male. When we, uh, when we were in oil and gas museum, they said at that time, oil and gas industry was almost completely male dominated and it still is. So you can imagine how many fathers, sons, brothers, grandfathers have passed away here. And there's a little, little bench right there for people to sit and reflect and remember. It's a beautiful place. May the rest in peace.